Good morning, church family. It's great to join you again as we explore God's Word together. I know my family misses fellowshipping with you and pray that you are all doing well and continue to place your trust in the Lord for all things. This is our second week in our virtual Sunday School lesson. And if you missed last week's and want to catch up, just go to the website and you can do that. Parents, there will be several questions and tasks to respond to that I hope will allow your family to dig deeper into the lesson. We'll certainly ask your kids even more questions and challenge them even further as you study God's Word as a family. To begin, ask one of the kids to open up your study in prayer, asking specifically that the Holy Spirit would allow a heart-changing understanding of the Scripture we will be digging into today. This week, we are exploring Lesson 24, Jesus Rises from the Dead. Our focus passage is Mark 16, 1 through 8. Today's central truth is Jesus is alive and His resurrection is the most important event in all of history. Before we begin with today's passage, let's briefly review what we learned last week. We discovered that Jesus was cruelly mocked during His crucifixion. He was the true King and Son of God and he was suffering the worst punishment for the sake of sinners. Yet they just laughed at him. Worst of all, God the Father poured out his wrath on Jesus, counting him as a sinner in the place of sinners. But in the end, there were still a few who honored Jesus, who saw that he really was the Son of God. Because of his death, we have hope. We are no different than the cruel people who laughed at him. But because he finished his mission, we can be forgiven. All that is required is that we respond in true faith and repentance. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they're saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. For our lesson today, we will focus on two key parts of our passage. The woman expected an occupied tomb, verses 1 through 3. The woman found an empty tomb, verses 4 through 8. How did the women respond when they first came upon the tomb and after the angel's message? They were alarmed because their expectation of having to further anoint Jesus' dead body was totally interrupted by an already open tomb with no dead body and an angel inside. After hearing the message, they fled from the tomb, possibly still in shock, first from meeting a heavenly being, and then astonishment that Jesus had really risen. Remember, if you read the other gospel accounts, they mention different things. However, this only makes a case that there are four unique vantage points which gives even greater details when looking at all four gospel accounts together. They do not contradict, which means saying the opposite things about one event. For example, in Matthew and Mark, it specifically says one angel speaks to them, but Luke and John describe there being two angels. It still does not contradict because Matthew and Mark never said there was only one angel. So why the difference between the accounts? Well, it's simply that each one has focused on slightly different issues, and this influenced how they reported the event. Why do you think Jesus first appeared to women and not the rulers?
At the time, the testimony of women was not considered worthy. Jesus was not concerned with the tradition of the day. He knew they would be the first to come to his empty tomb, and they would then receive the special blessing of being the first to find out. You see, if the rulers would have found out first, they would have done everything they could to cover up the truth, which is what they tried to do anyway when they found out. Explain the hope that the resurrection gave to the disciples, especially Peter. The disciples became completely sold out for spreading the gospel and eventually became martyrs because of it. That means they were killed for their faith. So no person in the right mind would die for, their, for a lie like that. The resurrection is true and that should change our lives too. How does Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, 14 view the importance of the resurrection of Christ? And if Christ had not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. Enough said. How does the resurrection confirm Jesus' payment for sin? Explore Acts 17, 30-31 to find out. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now He commands all people everywhere to repent because He has fixed a day on which He will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom He has appointed. And of this He has given assurance to all raising Him from the dead. Lastly, how many other famous religious figures in history raised from the dead? Well, therefore, what does this say about the Bible and Christianity? To summarize our lesson today, we discovered that all of Jesus' followers thought it was over. Perhaps they would see him again in the next world, but not this one. The women came to pour perfume over his corpse in the tomb, but the tomb was empty. The stone was rolled aside and there was nobody. Instead, an angel announced that he had risen and would meet them just as promised. The women rushed out, overcome with fear at the incredible truth. Jesus is alive. Jesus' death and resurrection must go together. If Jesus died but did not come back to life, then his death would be useless. But because he did come back to life, we know that his sacrifice was pleasing to God and had fully paid the price for sin. He also conquered death and he has life in himself. To receive this life, we must come to him in faith and obedience, trembling in awe before the great and powerful Son of God. So how do you respond to this most important truth?